When working on CI-CD, we want to be able to execute a variety of scripts and commands in different languages and shells into the same action, and then map the output of those back to our workflow. We also want to be able to reuse parts of our workflows inside other workflows. Those two things are historically very difficult to achieve using GitHub Actions, but despair not, because today I'm going to show you how to do just that using a brand new feature that has been just released in GitHub Actions, Composite Run Steps. Hi everybody, and welcome back to Code Today. Today, we talk about some of the most common pain points we face when working with CI-CD workflows, and actually with any automation workflow, and how to solve them using a very new feature that has been just released in GitHub Actions, the Composite Run Steps. In this video, you will learn about the basic components needed and how to create and use a package composite run steps action. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other videos like this. So first things first, what is a composite run steps action? Well, it's a new kind of action that allows you to create and bundle multiple run steps in one single action, and then reuse that bundle as a single step in another action. Simply speaking, it's basically a way to nest actions within actions. So why would you want to use those? Well, a very common example is to create a template for your actions and then reuse that across your projects. Or another one is then when you have multiple projects that need to do exactly the same steps and you don't want to repeat that in every workflow, so you can create a composite run steps action and then reuse that across your projects. Best of all, whenever you need to create or to modify something, you just do that in the central location and that is automatically spread to all the action that use that composite run step action. All right, now that we know what composite run steps actions are, and why they are important, let's see how we can use them. For each run step in a composite action, these are the properties that are currently supported. And in addition to them, also mapping inputs and outputs throughout the workflow is supported. Let's jump into actions and create one. I have this new repo over here that I created for hosting my composite run steps actions. So let's go to VS Code. I have the same repo here that I've cloned before, and I've already created these two shell scripts over here to execute some command and copy some files. If you're going to run commands on Linux, it's very important that you remember to mark those shell scripts as executable, otherwise your action will fail. So let's jump in and create a new file. Let's call it action.yaml. And this is also important. The file name can be only action.yaml or action.yml. And copy in the code for the metadata of the action. As you can see here, the syntax is basically the same as the normal GitHub actions but this is a metadata file. So it doesn't have some of the requirement for the GitHub Actions. For example, there's no trigger over here. And name, description, and runs are mandatory, while inputs and outputs are optional. As I said before, mapping inputs and outputs in our workflow is one of the reasons why we went down this path. So here we have it, the input section and the output section. For my input, I will have a destination folder, and I mark that as required. Remember that, in this example, I'm trying to copy some files, so I want to have a destination folder where to copy the files. As output, I want to have the number of files that have been copied. But since my script only pretends to copy some files, instead of grabbing the actual number of files, I'll map that to a random number generation over here. And I'm doing so using the normal GitHub action context. So using the name of the step, the output parameter, and the variable name that is actually defined in the step itself. So nothing new over here. The most important part is that under the run, we have this using keyword over here that instructs the engine about the type of this YAML file. In this case, it's a composite file. And as you see down here, the rest is basically the same as any GitHub action because we have different steps we can execute. I'm just telling the engine where to find these files, which is in the github.action path. Nothing too different over here. The only thing is, remember, it is using composite directive that is required for the composite run steps actions. Let's save this, and we need to send these files to the remote. So let's add it, commit, and push. There's one more thing we need to do. 
If we go back to our GitHub interface, we do have the files. As you can see here, GitHub already identified this as an action. In fact, it gives us the possibility to publish this to the marketplace, but this is not what we want to do now. The thing we need to do instead is adding a tag and a release to this repo. So let's click on tags and let's create a release. I'll call my release just v1 and publish. This will create a v1 release and we'll also tag the repo with the v1 tag at the states we are now. And this is important because if you are familiar with actions, you know that every time you use an action out of the marketplace, you need to specify a tag or a label for that. And this will be our tag for the composite action. In this example, I created a new repository to host my composite run steps actions because I like to keep things organized. And in my opinion, this also enhanced the reusability. But of course, you can save your new workflows also in the local repo and reference them from here. Before we continue, hit the like button below if you think this video provides value to you or you find it insightful. Now that we have all the files and the tags in place, let's go to another repo and create a new GitHub action that will actually use the composite one. Let's start with a plain one and override this with the actual code. Let's see what we have here. First of all, I'm going to launch this GitHub action manually through the workflow dispatch event. If you haven't seen this yet, I'd recommend you checking out the video I made on how to start a GitHub action manually. You can find the link up here and in the video description. As you can see, this is a normal GitHub action. In fact, we have the trigger, the jobs, and so on and so forth. But the interesting part is how we use our custom action. We just use the uses keyword, which is how we would normally execute any action from the marketplace, but we pass our account and the name of our repo together with the tag and release we've created before. This is why I said before it was an important step because without that, this will not work. And we also have our input parameter. And last but not least, we can reference our output parameter from the bundles of step and use it in the next step. Let's save this and see it in action. Let's go to actions, no pun intended, our composite example, and let's trigger it manually. We have it here. Let's go in and we can see that our action is completed. We can also expand the log in here and see that the output from our nested action, if you will, are all here. Expand this as well. And we also have our input param together, as I said, with the output. And we also have the output from that command before. This comes from the random number generator that pretends to be the number of files that have been copied and it is being reported in our action. So that looks like a normal action, but remember that this part over here it's actually contained in our composite run steps action and is utilized as a nested action from this action. Not bad, right? The possibility to bundle together commands and scripts and then reuse them across different GitHub actions is a real game changer for this service. But there are some notes. Since at the time of recording, this feature has been very recently announced, there are some limitations. In fact, there are some things that are not yet supported and those include sanity conditionals, continue on error, uses and timeouts, but the team is already working to bring them in a future release. Also, another thing that is not supported is using secrets within their composite run steps action. But of course, you can still use all of those features in a workflow that uses a composite run step action. All right, that's it for today. I will have another video on GitHub composite run steps actions whenever the service will reach a higher maturity and will gain some of the features that are currently missing. So consider subscribing if you haven't already and stick around not to miss that video. If you found this video interesting, I would recommend you to check out these other videos on GitHub Actions I made. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.